God, I put my neck. This is the word of the Lord, your creator. And I am the God who stood before the world was framed. I am the first, the last, and everything between. I hold your future. Who could know these things but me? So don't fear, I will be your song. No, don't fear, I will be your song. Sing, sing, O oh barren land. Water is coming to the thirsty Though you are empty, I am the well Draw from me, I will provide Welcome to First Christian Church, a community of faith that strives to be welcoming and loving in all kinds of ways. So however you found us this morning, however you join us, we are glad you're here and we want to know you are welcome in this space. Also, it helps us to know where you're joining us from. So if you're joining us from Southern California, let us know, or from any other place around the world. It reminds us that we remain connected during this challenging and difficult time. Also, if you have prayers you'd like to share, feel free to share those in the comments section. I'll try to incorporate them into our time of prayer. If I don't, they will be included in the weekly email that goes out on Tuesday. Also, we will break bread together later in the service. So this is a great time to go to your kitchen or your, to your pantry and grab something that you can share later in the service. And it can be anything you want. Um, just know that you're welcome in that space. 
Finally, this is Earth Day Sunday. On the 22nd of this week, communities around the world will celebrate Earth Day. So we're taking time to reflect on that day, the beauty of God's creation, and how we're called to sustain that creation. So that being said, another thing you can let us know in the comments section is where you find God's beauty. If that's in the beaches and the mountains of Southern California, the rolling plains of the Midwest, the cold winters of the Northeast, or the wild refu wildlife refuge in southwestern Oklahoma. Let us know where you find God's beauty this day, and let us celebrate that creation and continue to find ways to protect it and sustain it. So let us continue in worship by joining together in song. Thank you, Brandon. Please join us in singing our opening songs, God of Wonders and Indescribable. Colors. 
rise or fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. seen heavenly storehouses laid in with snow who imagined the sun and give source to its light yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night none can fathom indescribable uncontainable you place the stars in the sky and you them by name. You are amazing God. All powerful, untamable, us struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing God. Incomparable, unchangeable, you see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing God. All powerful, untamable, awestruck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing God. You are amazing God. You are And now we've come to that time in our service in which we share prayers with one another, prayers about our lives, our friends and family, and for those we don't even know. Again, if you have a prayer you'd like to share with us, please share it in the comment section. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, reach out to us during the week, and we will make sure to include you in our prayers. I will share a prayer this morning, and they then say, God, in your mercy, I invite you to respond with, hear our prayer. So we begin as we begin every week, by giving thanks. Giving thanks for this community of faith that remains connected. Even as the world begins to open up, we strive to remain connected and keep people safe. God, in your mercy. We also continue to pray for the number of people in our community or connected to our community who are dealing with some kind of medical uncertainty, such as Pam J, Janine Kilmer, who awaits surgery this week, Silva's family as they deal with a number of issues, Ann Connolly, Kevin's mom, Richie, a friend of Britt and Azra, Beth's friend, Stan, Diane Engelbright's husband, Art P and Jeff, friends of Sharon. God, in your mercy. We also pray this day for Todd Hopmeyer and his family. This past week, he lost a cousin. So may we keep Todd, Sarah, and their entire family in thought and prayer. God, in your mercy. We pray for those in our community who are still in assisted living facilities and waiting to see their families, such as Janet, Mary, Paul, Audrey, and a few others. God, in your mercy. We also pray for students, parents, and teachers as they return to classrooms and in-person learning. May we continue to have the courage to be safe, to be wise and gentle. God, in your mercy. In the wake of gun violence and social unrest, may we hold all communities and all people in thought and prayer and our elected officials that they might have the courage to, ask, to act gently, justly, and lovingly. God, in your mercy. Finally, on this Earth Day Sunday, May we hold all of creation, the waters, the mountains, the beaches, 
the rolling plains, the deserts, all of creation in thought and prayer this day. God, in your mercy, let us continue with a poem. The Creation by James Weldon Johnson. And God stepped out on space and looked around and said, I'm lonely, I'll make me a world. And as far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnights down in a cypress swamp. Then God smiled and the light broke and the darkness rolled up on one side and the light stood shining on the other and God said, that's good. Then God raised their arm and waved their hand over the sea and over the land. And God said, bring forth, bring forth. And quicker than God could drop their hand, fishes and fowls and beasts and birds swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forests and the woods and split the air with their wings. And God said, that's good. Then God walked around and God looked around on all that they had made. God looked at their sun and looked at their moon and looked at their little stars. God looked on their world with all its living things. And God said, I'm lonely still.
join me in a time of prayer. God of all creation, we give thanks for the ways in which we are surrounded by beauty, from a simple sunrise to a walk in our neighborhoods. We give thanks for the ways in which we are reminded that we are deeply connected to that beauty. So as we enter this time of prayer, naming aloud those concerns and joys we have, we simply ask that you continue to surround us in that beauty and grace. And so we pray this day for those who are facing medical uncertainty. We pray for our students and teachers and parents. We pray for communities that are continually isolated during this challenging time. We give thanks for activists and for those who are striving to build a more aware and just world. And we also pray for this community of faith, that we continue to be connected to your love and our love for one another. That as we move in a new direction and new spaces, that we are mindful of each other, safe and protective of all that is sacred. And so now we turn to that same beauty and we pray for it as well, for all of creation, for the waters, for the hills, for the mountains, for the deserts, for ecosystems that are wildly diverse. And God, may we continue to hold all of that sacred this day and every day. In your name we pray, amen. And now, I invite you to turn to Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they flee. At the sound of your thunder they take to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to, place, to that place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. And the psalmist continues, O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there. Living things both small and great. There go the ships and the whales that you formed just for the sport of it. Today, as I said, is Earth Day Sunday. I've invited three people, Sharon Springer, Deborah Baird, and Owen Conley, to reflect on the beauty of creation and the ways we're called to sustain and protect it. This congregation is full of individuals who take advantage of the beauty of this world, whether it's hiking, camping, gardening, or the myriad of other things. We also have a number of people who strive to protect this earth. And so I invite you in the comments section, as they're sharing their stories, to also share where you find beauty in creation and what you do or feel called to do to protect it. So let us continue in this time of reflection with Sharon Springer. Good morning. It's really nice to be here. And um, I miss seeing all of you in person. And um, very soon, I will turn 65 years old, and I'm very, very grateful for that. I'm grateful for a father who, a poor man from Mississippi, who wanted to see the world and who wanted to show it to us. And so my father drove, and that means that we rode. And he had two tours of duty in the state of Alaska, and I'm from southern Mississippi, and each time he drove. So that's four trips, two up and two back, and he picked a different route every time. 
So I've seen the majesty of glaciers. I've seen those rolling meadows. I've seen spectacular waterfalls, wetlands. I've seen some of the most beautiful places in the world. Um, he took us to North Africa. I've seen the desert. I've seen the Mediterranean Sea. And so I'm very grateful to be 65. And, but I'm also, I've witnessed the melting of those glaciers, salt water infiltration of those wetlands. I've witnessed the impact of a 30 foot storm surge from Hurricane Katrina that washed away my hometown. And I know all of you are aware of what climate change, how it is ravaging us. And we need to do better. We can see it in our scorched fruit trees. I've been in Southern California now for almost 30 years. We can see it in the rising heat, the persistent drought, sea level rise. And I just, um, just this morning, I was on a walk before this service. And you all know, many of you know that transportation is very important to me. We, um, transportation emits 42% of our greenhouse gases. And so I feel like that's a very easy way for us to help that. We can maybe walk more, we can use public transportation. It's an opportunity that's available to us every day. And it's easy. And always, I, I have to tell you that when I bring it up, I hear, but I can't, I can't use public transportation. It doesn't go anywhere. There's always a reason why somebody can't use it. And I'm asking you to please give it a try. Generally, um, our lower income population is on public transportation. And so you can witness them and their struggles. You can witness the 95 year old woman getting on the orange line, pushing her walker, the foster child who uses the orange line to get to school, are unhoused sleeping on it. And so I challenge you to please think of reasons why we can use how we can use public transportation. And I want to give you another example about our utility Burbank Water and Power. We have a green choice program. The capacity of that program is 2000. If we sign up for it, it cost us, and it's closed for now, it costs us six to $10 more every month to offset our non-fossil fuel generated electricity by renewable. The capacity is 2000. They just closed the enrollment at 182. And also, may, maybe you know, I did a mayor show on this, pleading with people to please sign up for it. And I would hear, no, I can't do that. I'm not paying six to $10 or more for that. I can buy solar panels and then it won't cost me anything. Well, solar panels cost tens of thousands of dollars before incentives and before tax credits. And so again, I heard reasons why, why we could not offset our non-fossil fuel energy by using, by trusting our utility to offset it. Um, with renewable energy. So in my 65 years, I've seen some of the most beautiful places on this earth, and I'm so grateful. But people, the glaciers are melting, sea level is rising, we're losing wetlands, and we can do better. We can do better. We can do better in private. We don't have to publicly drive an EV. We don't have to have solar panels on our roofs. There are ways to participate. And so I'm asking us to please always, 
always try to do better. And it doesn't have to be in public. It can be in private. We have no natural water in Burbank, California. We import every drop of our water. Please turn off the water. Please put a bucket under your faucet, flush the toilet with it, use it, reuse it. Every drop is precious. So I'm so grateful that I am soon to be 65. So many people I have loved have not made it to 65. But along with that, we can lead by walking around. And I hope that we do that. We have so many younger members of our congregation and they are trusting us. And they have not, you know, they're so committed to this, but we need to do a better job at leading the way. Um, as God's stewards of this great, big, beautiful earth, I'm just asking us all, I'm asking us to do better, to help us make, to help me make better policy. I need you all to speak up, to help us make better policy that this beautiful earth can keep rotating around the sun. Um, thank you. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you and for this great, big, beautiful earth. Hello, everyone. I'm Deborah. Um, happy Earth Week. Happy Earth Day every day. Um, I've always had sort of an unusual connection to nature. Friends have told me that their pet that was antisocial um, when I've come to visit have been generally surprised when they suddenly see it sitting on my lap. Animals know that I'm a kindred spirit. I've been an environmentalist for the last 20 years. I remember one time trying to put together green projects to do at the church for Green Chalice. And I went there to discuss the details. A squirrel ran out as I was coming out from up the ramp and sat at the door looking at me back and forth, waiting for me to open it. I kept thinking to myself, what would Brandon say if the squirrel got in the church? So I tried to give it the idea that there wasn't any food in there and that it really didn't need to be in there. And I waited and eventually it left. You see, everything in nature is connected through physical need or spiritually. Food chains are important to animal survival within ecosystems. A mouse eats bark from a tree, a snake eats the mouse, and the hawk eats the snake. If food chains break down, then the other animals in the chain may not survive. Human activity needs to be respectful of that need. As the planet warms, animal lives become in a life or death struggle. Whales that migrate to have their babies in warmer water find the water is now too warm. Their food cannot survive in warmer water. 70% of krill need near Antarctica have died. Migrating insects such as monarch butterflies now fly a different path because their food is no longer available, which impacts pollination. Polar bears in the Arctic no longer have the ice flows they need to go out and find their prey due to melting ice. Humans don't realize this will affect us also. Our crops will not grow if temperatures become too high or weather becomes too severe. People in warm regions may have to immigrate to survive in the future. As the ice melts at our poles and oceans rise, low-lying coastal areas will no longer be habitable. Bees were becoming endangered, and if we don't have our pollinators, we may not have as many food choices. Although nature is wonderful to observe and relax in it, it is also a responsibility to sustain. Pollution created by fossil fuels will break down the precious balance in nature that our precious God created, putting nature and us in peril. Clean energy will help us prevent that from happening. God created everything we would need and all the animals would need. He is in every tree and leaf. He is in every butterfly and bird. When I watch my garden, I see a hummingbird drink from my flowers 
and the bee and the butterfly pollinating them. I see a little green bird that hops in every plant and rustles through them, eating the insects there. They all have a purpose. They all give and get what they need. God in his wonderful presence is there. I've had the Holy Spirit visit me twice in my life. He always says to be very still and to listen. An amazing thing happened. A small young bird came flying towards my sliding door on my balcony and hovered in front of it. It lit on the handle. Then it would fly and sit on the fence for a few minutes and come back and hover in front of my door. It did that all day long. As a matter of fact, it did it for four days. My mother was nervous. She wondered if it was like the movie, The Birds, and wanted me to drive the bird away. Of course I wouldn't. Everything has purpose. There's a reason for everything. On the fifth day, another bigger bird took over. It was so unusual. I couldn't get out my door unless it was off feeding. I had a bird hovering in front of my door. I thought maybe God was sending me a message. Through his amazing creations, I thought that day and realized that I had not been doing anything for the environment for the last two months. COVID-19 had put a stop to in-person gatherings. I couldn't make presentation or get presentations or give speeches in front of crowds. Even legislative city council meetings did not have an audience and most required just written comments at the beginning of the illness. Later, public comments were added online. I got on the computer and I searched around for something for me to do. And I signed up to be a mentor to train environmentalists around the world. Within a couple of hours, the bird was gone and did not return. God had sent me a message to get out there and work on saving his planet. I was still and I listened. Let's make sure we listen and become attuned to nature's needs and his wishes. Let's be a positive connection to the environment and part of the heartbeat of the planet. Hello everyone. In my reflection today, I wanted to talk about the beauty that I have seen in nature on my many campouts and in all the places that I have been. In my many journeys, I have traveled to wide open spaces of rock and gravel to sleep in tents under the stars. I have also been to the beautiful Yosemite National Park and to the awe-inspiring Grand Canyon. In each of these locations, I have found myself surrounded by the beauty of nature. I have asked myself, what makes the environment around me so beautiful? I think it is a little bit of God that is in creation that makes these places so beautiful, just as God is in each and, it, is in each and every one of us. We have to protect the environment because we need to protect the little bit of God that is in each mountain, in each tree, and in each body of water. Ever since I was about 11 years old, I have had the phrase, leave every place you go to cleaner than how you found it in my mind as I travel to every camp out or hiking trip that I go on. I believe that this is a good mentality when it comes to protecting the planet on which we live on. On a few of your hikes or camp outs, I encourage you to not only pick up the trash you left behind, but also any trash that you see that was left behind by someone else. In this way, we can make the planet cleaner and more habitable. With this mentality, we can better protect the secret beauty of God that has been left in each aspect of nature. Thank you. Happy Sunday, everyone, my family of faith. I feel privileged standing here for the first time at the sanctuary, speaking about our creator. Because of my church father, 
Sam Sr. His kind greeting, teaching me how to sing at the chorus, brought me back to this sanctuary every Sunday last nine years. I'm so privileged to say God bless his soul. Psalm 104 starts with, Bless the Lord, O my soul. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with garment, and on and on, about sun and moon, light and darkness, heaven and earth, and all that Lord created in it. Genesis, first chapter in Bible, Lord created all of this in one breath. The beauty of this creation is beyond our understanding and comprehension. During my junior high and high school years, I was interested in God's work and his creation. The planets, sun, moon, stars, their undisturbed work and harmony. As I read more, it, I became, it became mystery in my mind to see God's greatness wisdom and attributes, how able and unstoppable he is. Beauty in all he created, creatures large and small, human beings, planets, oceans, sky and more, our God is gloriously incomprehensible. He is infinite, has no boundaries. His love, holiness, mercy, and grace are unlimited in their scope, expression. God is eternal. God is self-sufficient. God is a person, personal spirit. Our creator, through his love and goodness, provided a way for us to have relationship with him and all of his creations in harmony. He related himself to us with his word. He came down to earth as human being through his son, Jesus Christ. He destroyed the, destroyed the barrier of sin and self-centeredness. He sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in Christians with his presence and grace. Lord's sovereignty rules over all creation and establishes by his wise administration. Let's praise and rejoice our heavenly Father. Praise the Lord in new song. His praise to the assembly of his faithfulness. Let the children praise him with dancing, make melody, with tambourine and lyre. This is glory for all his love and holiness. For the Lord is a great God. In his hand are all the corners of earth. And the strength of the hills is his also. Let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as he was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Silva. And now, family of God, I invite you, if you have not yet grabbed something to eat as bread and something to drink. You may do that now so that we can come to the table together and eat and drink. I've heard a couple of times uh, throughout our reflections this morning that we see God in nature, in the trees and in all the beautiful things that we see. And as we come to the table this morning, we remember that we too are a beautiful part of God's creation. That when we gather at the table and we look at one another, we see the uniqueness and beauty of the ways that God has created each of us. When we come to the table, we have the opportunity to remember that people are not only welcome at this table, but we are all celebrated just the way we are. That we are fully embraced in the uniqueness, the ways that we were made. And so wherever you are, in your journey this morning. Know that you are not only welcome here at this table, but you belong. And so family of God, we together remember the night that Jesus shared that last meal with his friends. And at that table, he took some bread and he broke it saying, this is my body 
broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And then in a similar way, Jesus took a cup. And after giving thanks, he poured it out saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Family of God, I invite you to take a piece of your bread and to eat it. And Owen will be sharing or leading us in the Lord's prayer together. Let us give thanks for this table of radical inclusion, love, hospitality, belonging. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please take the cup. All right. So, uh, first up for announcements. Uh, as the church is still busy and active, we have expenses to pay. After the service, I encourage you to donate. One easy way of doing this is through the use of Easy Tithe, which you can find in the pull down menu under Give Now, or you can put a check in the mail. Brandon? Yes, thanks, Owen. Also, our weekly programming continues this week. We have a Bible study on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. If you want more information about that, please contact me. All right. Um, also, this Wednesday is another youth game night. Uh, Beth has a few games, and all the kids have a lot of fun. Uh, this is open to all the youth, so please join. Uh, back to you, Brandon. <laughs> thanks, Owen. Also, Thursday evening, we have a check-in group that prays with one another and shares very powerful things. So Thursday's at 8 p.m. If you want more information about that, find it in the weekly email. Owen? Uh, thanks, Brandon. After the service, I invite you to join us for coffee and conversation. Uh, we have a few people join, and everyone has uh, a lot of fun. So uh, please join. Thank you. All right, I have a few more announcements and then we'll turn it over to our musicians. This Sunday is the Racial Justice Reading Group at 5 p.m. If you're a part of that, this is just a reminder. If you want more information about it, let me know. Also, uh, Sigil and FCCB's Happy Hour is coming up on the 25th at 5 p.m. We have the Zoom link for that. If you want to join that uh, fun and relaxed group, please let us know. Also, uh, for those who are a part of First Christian Church, we have a new organization using our kitchen. Um, they have not settled on their name yet, but the purpose of the organization is to take food, home-cooked food to the encampments and those who live there, as well as hygiene kits and other things. If you want more information about that opportunity, at some point they'll look for volunteers, but let me know if you want to be included in communications about that. And then finally, next Sunday's coffee and conversation will be special. We have the co-founders of Burbank for Armenia joining us to talk about how we can honor and support Armenians in this area, and they will have an update in terms of what's going on in Armenia as well. So join us for Coffee and Conversation this week and next week. That was a long list. All right, Britt, Zach, Janine, and Marina. Thank you, Brandon. Everyone, please join us in singing Isaiah's song. This is the word of the Lord, your creator. I am the God who stood before the world was framed. I am the first, the last, and everything between. I hold your future.
Sing, sing, O oh barren land, water is coming to the thirsty. Though you are empty, I am the well. Draw from me, I will This is the word of the Lord, your Creator. And I stand from age to age, the Ancient of Days. I am the Holy One, the fairest of ten thousand. Once again, a thank you to our three speakers today, Sharon, Deborah, and Owen. Thank you for your thoughtful words and, and your encouragement to us to keep doing better. And now, family of God, let us go out to the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of that spirit be with each and every one of us. Let us go in peace. Amen.